So what happens when we build networks at layer two? Well, the nice thing about switches is they are essentially plug and play. You can plug a switch into a switch, into another switch, power them on, and you will get a layer two network. And there isn't actually any configuration required to make the switches work because of the learning mechanism that I just described. And any switch that you buy, even an unmanaged switch, will have that learning mechanism built in. So given that it's really easy to build networks at layer two, and lots of people build their networks that way, how far can you go? What is it that stops you building a layer two network as big as you like? Why could we not, for example, build the entire internet across the world as just a big layer two switch network where everybody has a switch and they just plug it into the next switch along? Well, there are a number of reasons for this. Now, the first reason is to do with broadcasts. So as I mentioned before, when a switch receives a broadcast frame, which is one that's marked as being a broadcast, then it must deliver it out of every port. And so what happens is that every time you send a broadcast frame, every single port on the network will receive a copy of that broadcast frame. Now, broadcasts are a normal background activity that goes on in a network. So if you plug in a Windows PC, for example, every 30 seconds, it will generally send a broadcast out announcing that it's a Windows PC and what its machine name is. If you plug a printer into a network, it will do something similar. Um, there are broadcasts required for things like ARP, the Address Resolution Protocol. So these broadcasts are part of normal background activity on a network, but the more devices you plug into the same switch network, the more broadcasts you will have, and eventually you will just have a network that's swamped with broadcast traffic and nothing else. So that gives one limit as to how big you can build uh, a switch network. Now, the second reason is a little bit more subtle. The second reason is that the forwarding tables in the switches have limited space. They have a limited number of MAC addresses that they can store. And so if you get a $10 uh, cheap home switch, it might have capacity for 64 MAC addresses, let's say. If you buy a more expensive switch, it might have a capacity of 1,000 MAC addresses or, or 16,000 MAC addresses. But whatever it is, it's still going to be a limit. And they'll get a point where if your network becomes too big, then these tables will overflow. And what happens when the tables overflow is that the switches are forced to kick out entries from their forwarding tables to make space for new ones. And that means every time you see a frame that comes in for a MAC address that's not in the forwarding table, it has to be sent out of all ports, like a broadcast. So what you get is, if you've got too many MAC addresses on your network, then there will become, you will see churn in your forwarding tables, which is a lot of work for the switch, and you will see lots more traffic effectively being processed as broadcasts when it shouldn't be processed as broadcasts. And that in turn will lead to a collapse in your network. So that's not a point you want to get to. You must keep your size of your layer two domain so that you have enough MAC address space in your switch tables. The third reason is a little bit more subtle and it's down to debugging. There's very little visibility you get at layer two as to how your network is working. You can have managed switches and you can look at the forwarding tables, but if there's a problem, let's say some device on your network generates a broadcast storm, which is a fairly common problem. So a storm of broadcast traffic appears in your network. The switches will happily forward those broadcasts all over the network. They will flood across the entire network and your entire network will be full of broadcasts. It's then very, very hard to pinpoint where the source of that broadcast storm is, where it is, because the, the broadcasts are everywhere on your network. There's also no equivalent to a layer two trace route to allow you to work out what path packets are choosing to take through the network. So it's very hard to debug and manage a large layer two network. So for that reason alone, you should think about keeping your layer two networks small so that they're easy to understand and easy to manage.